Hello everyone, welcome to the channel. In this video, welcome to the channel. We are starting a new series on Terraform. In this series, we are going to create a short videos on the different topic on Terraform so that it will help you to navigate and learn a specific topics if you wish to. So rather than going on to a lengthy discussions on a Terraform topic, we would go to a short discussion on a specific area or the specific topic. I hope this will help you. Hi, my name is Rakesh Suryavanshi. Let's first of all understand what is infrastructure. In your organization, when you consider for a application development or deployment, then you might have a web server, database server or the network and the security aspect. So whether it is the on-premise, the whether the application is deployed on on-premise or it is in the cloud, you might have at least one of these configurations deployed for your application or maybe all of them. This is called infrastructure. So it could be an entire web application server, database server, or it could be even the DNS, certificate, routing, firewall, anything, all this part of the infrastructure. When it comes to the cloud, different cloud providers offers the different set of services such as software as services, platform as a service, infrastructure as a service, which combines together and helps you to deploy your applications or host your application on a billing model. The software as a service means the application which you are trying to hire on a cloud, the whole sole responsibility of that and application platform as well as the application infrastructure will be accountable by your cloud provider. Whereas in your platform as a service component, the responsibility of the entire platform and the infrastructure will be from the will be owned by your cloud provider. And at the last, the infrastructure as service. These are the type of services in which only the infrastructure part will be managed by your cloud provider, whereas the other part such as deploying the application, managing the entire platform within the application, such as the deploying the patches, managing the certificate, rolling out any other changes to the infrastructure, all this will be managed by you as in the owner of that particular infrastructure. So you would have full control on the infrastructure to manage the life cycle of it. I hope this gives you some idea what the infrastructure is. Now consider that you have a requirement wherein you have required wherein you need to deploy hundreds of web servers, which is virtual machines, the database server, a complex hub and spoke networks, firewall topologies, certifications some credentials which needs to be stored as well some of the database server which is which could be non relational or relational database servers to deploy these infrastructure there are many possible ways if you are a beginner then you might want to go with a ui based deployment approach which means that each of these cloud provider whether it is azure aws google or any of them these provides the user interface which can help you to provision these services. So you can provision hundreds of virtual machine, database server, network firewall and everything from the user interface. And that works very well, even though if you do not have the knowledge, but if you have the requirement of the infrastructure, then you can provision that easily. On top of that, each of these cloud provider, they also have the automation scripting way of provisioning the infrastructure such as with Azure, you can use PowerShell or Azure CLI to deploy the infrastructure. Similarly, in Google, you can use the Google Cloud Console, which is a command line tool, CLI tool to deploy the infrastructure as well. Having both the approach UI as well as the command line has its own downside. With the UI approach, it's not reliable, even though you can create it easily, but there is no guarantee that the configuration will be similar what we have in the dev environment and in the production environment, because there are chances of the human error as you, it requires to follow the human instruction. 
and that's the reason we your organization or the industry now always focus or invest more on the automation side of it now let's come to the second option which is deploying the infrastructure with cli yes you can deploy the infrastructure with the help of cli but that will give you that will require some knowledge of the scripting language and your infrastructure possibly might not be fully 100% accurate or 100% automated and the third problem it might have is if you have a requirement to deploy the infrastructure on a hybrid cloud or multi cloud environment for example if you have a large application in which part of the application services are configured in azure part of them are in aws then having the knowledge of same azure cli will not help you to automate both azure as well as the aws infrastructure so we need a common platform which can help to automate your application infrastructure across the hybrid cloud in on premise or cloud or it could be on the multi cloud as well and that is where the demand of the infrastructure comes into the picture with the help of terraform and that's why you should learn terraform i hope i have given you some idea what the infrastructure is and how do you need why do you need the automation skills to uh, automate your infrastructure with terraform